Now we have been uh, looking at the Kirchhoff, uh, Kirchhoff's laws and we have seen several examples. The most important thing about Kirchhoff's laws is that we should always use them as last uh, resort because the number of equations they yield are actually a bit much to solve in the uh, 30 or 60 seconds uh, that we have. So here is another shortcut technique, the y delta transform and this is again a shortcut technique uh, to applying the full force of the Kirchhoff laws. So here is the y delta transform. Now let's understand what does it, it really mean. It means that these uh, two networks between the three nodes n1, n2 and n3. So these are the three nodes. They are common to both of uh, these resistive networks. And these two resistive networks are exactly equivalent provided that a very special kind of relationships uh, exist between the uh, between these resistances uh, R A, R B, R C and R1, R2 and R3. So provided that relationship is, is maintained, these two networks of resistances are exactly equivalent. Now what do I mean by when I say uh, they are equivalent? It means that if I apply voltages V1, V2 and V3 across the three nodes N1, N2, N3, in both the cases, I am applying the same voltage, I would get out the same current to the external circuit. So in both the cases, if I were to apply the same voltages, I would get out same current. So here I got currents I1, I2 and I3, then here also I would get the same currents I1, I2 and I3 to the respective external uh, wires. So as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned, from, from, from where we actually uh, where these three nodes n1, n2, n3 are attached, right? There is the rest of the circuit. As far as the rest of the circuit is concerned, internally, if I go from this delta configuration to this star or y configuration, it does not really matter. If I go from the delta to y or y to delta to the rest of the circuit, it does not really matter because the voltage and current seen by the rest of the circuit remain exactly the same. So that is the point of this transform and it can only be done with resistances it cannot be done with batteries okay so only with resistance resistances we can uh, do this so now let's understand the what kind of relationship uh, should we maintain between these resistances in order for this transform to actually hold so let us first look at okay so before before we even uh, even do this the main motivation why we are doing this is that it actually helps us this transform actually helps us solve the wheat stone bridge because wheat stone bridge we know is, is 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 very important from examination perspective and with this transform with the help of this transform we can solve the wheat stone bridge without using the kirchhoff laws okay so that is the main motivation and we'll see how to do that in a second but before we do that let us just first try to understand if we go from this delta configuration to the star uh, configuration, then what is the values of R1, R2 and R3? What values of R1, R2, R3 should I choose uh, in terms of the resistances RB, RC uh, and uh, uh, RB uh, that this transformation actually is equivalent. Okay. So to in order to find out these values of R1, R2 and R3, what do I do? Is I, I uh, superimpose the star configuration on top of the delta configuration. So this is the superimposition, I have done that, okay. So these are the R1, R2 and R3, I have written them right here. And now I define the sum of all resistances R as RA plus RB plus RC. It is all the resistances RA, RB, RC, they are all combined, okay. And we are going from the delta to the star configuration. So I really want to find out the values of these resistances. What should these be, okay. So then I can write the value of resistance R1 in terms of RB and RC, right? So what do I do is I look at R1, I see the two resistances which are adjacent to R1, okay, which, is, which are sharing the same node as this R1 if you will, okay. So this RB and RC are the two resistances and I write this value of R1 as RB, RC divided by sum of R, okay, very, very simple. Notice that because here is R1 there, so RA is missing from the numerator, okay, that's how we can remember it. Similarly, the value of R2 comes out to be RA, RC, okay, so R2 adjacent resistances are RA and RC divided by the sum of all resistances, that is R1, RA plus RB plus RC and R3 is equal to RA, RB divided by sum of all resistances. So provided that if I choose the value of R1, R2 and R3 uh, in this format, if I, if, I, if I 
calculate these values of R1, R2 and R3 in terms of RA, RB, RC in this way, then and then I replace my delta network with this corresponding star network, the two networks are exactly equivalent. So that is what this is saying. So from going from delta to star configuration, these are the resistances. This is how I calculate the resistances. And we will show the proof of how this formula come about in another video. Okay, why uh, why this formula come about, about about the way they do. Okay. But for now, just take them at the face value because that's what ultimately it's important. We just need to remember it's a shortcut trick. Now, now let us try to go from the star to the delta configuration. Okay, so in order to do that, what I do is I draw my delta superimposed right here on the star. Okay, so now I am going other way around. I want to calculate the values of RA, RB and RC in terms of R1, R2 and R3. Okay, so this should be RC. Okay. So now let's just let's just do that. Before I do that, I can I define another term which is R R dash and this is nothing but combination of R1, R2 and R3 of all possible multiplications of these three resistances added together. So this is R2, R3 plus R3, R1. Okay. So what I have done, I have taken the resistances R1, R2 and R3. I have combined the various resistances in uh, all possible uh, uh, forms. I have multiplied them together and then added those uh, terms. Okay. This is what R R dash is. Now, I will calculate the values of R A, R B and R C. So R A is nothing but the summation of R R dash divided by what is the resistance opposite to R A? It is R1. Okay, because this is A, so 1 came here. Similarly, what is RB? It is summation R, R dash divided by what is opposite RB? It is R2. Okay, and I don't even have to look at the circuit. I can simply write because this is B, this is 2. So, in the C case, it will be divided by R3. Okay, very, very simple. Okay, nothing complicated. I okay, simply remember these formulas. Now let us understand how to use this formula to actually use this transform, the y delta transform to actually simplify the v stone bridge circuit because ultimately that is what we really want to do. We want to find out the equivalent resistance for example of this v stone bridge between Na and Nc. That is what my objective is. I want to find the single resistance convert all of these resistances to a single resistance, equivalent resistance. That's what I want to find out between NB, NA and NC. So as soon as I see the video stone based circuit, the first thing I do and that is still something that we should do is actually pray that, okay, this particular video stone bridge, let it be balanced. If it is balanced, then nothing flows through RBD. We can remove it and simplify it very simply. Okay, so <laughs> if that does not really happen, then we are in real trouble. If the circuit is not balanced, then we really have to use the Kirchhoff laws. There is no other uh, solution to this uh, problem. And then of course we get stuck because then we cannot do it in 30 seconds. But if we were to use this Y delta transform, right? So here is a Y, okay, this is a Y, this is a star and we are transforming it into delta. If I can convert that star into this uh, delta, I can find out the values of uh, R1, R2 and R3 in terms of these three original resistances. Okay, if I can do this transform, then rest of this circuit, then, then this circuit, okay, can be simplified very, very easily. This circuit is very easy to simplify just by using the parallel and series formula. Okay, and that is the beauty of this uh, technique that even complex circuits uh, come out to be very, very simple. So why is that the case? Let us see that first I did this transform. So I converted from my Y to this delta arrangement. That's the first thing I did. Now this delta, the first thing we'll notice is that this RAB and R R3 are actually in parallel. So I can convert them to an equivalent resistance right here. Similarly, this RBC and R1, they are in parallel. So I'll do the same thing here. Okay. So now okay, this is these two resistances are in parallel. These two resistances are in parallel. So I'll convert them to single resistance right here. Okay. Very, very simple. They are each converted to a single resistance. Now these two resistances are in series. So again more simplification happens. So what I can do now? I can convert this entire thing by adding these two resistances to a single resistance. And 
now these two resistances my single resistance here and this resistance r2 is r actually parallel so i can use my parallel formula again and i in this way i have simplified my entire bt stone bridge circuit i found out the equivalent resistance without using the kirchhoff laws okay so that is the beauty of this method uh, there is another way to solve this method and this is actually our preferred way we will always try to convert the delta into a star so as soon as we see a delta in the circuit we will try to convert uh, that uh, delta into a star so that is this is what we we will always try to do so here in the bt stone bridge in the first case we have identified a star in the second case we have identified a delta so there is a delta also here there is a triangle here so this is another way of simplifying our circuit so there is a delta here so i can convert this delta into a star now as soon as i convert this uh, delta into a star things become very very simple now the things are even more simpler even more simpler than before why because this because this ra ab and rb they are in series so they can be converted into a single resistance similarly rad and rd they are also in series so converted into a single resistance now these two r and r dash okay that's what i'm calling them they are actually in parallel so again they can be converted to a single resistance and finally that single resistance can actually be summed with rc to find the equivalent resistance across ra uh, na and nc so now let's look at this technique let's, let's just use this technique in order to simplify a problem so here is a problem you might not identify it as uh, a bt stone bridge but it is indeed a bt stone bridge so think about it this way that there is a, our two terminals of bt stone bridge are right here one is here one is here and these are the two branches and this is the bridge this is the bridge in the middle the 5 ohm resistor the r3 is in the bridge is sitting in the bridge okay so this is indeed a, a bt stone bridge and circuits can be given in this way so you should be able to identify uh, the bt stone bridge in various uh, no matter how it is it is drawn okay that is something uh, that the these uh, in the questions that can often be done in order to confuse you okay so here is our delta of the bt stone bridge so we can identify the delta very very straight away so very simply we can identify the the delta and this delta we need to convert it into a star so how do we do that so we use each of the terminals of the delta and we draw resistances from there so these are the three terminals of the delta so one is this terminal one is this terminal and of course this and these are the same terminal so they, this is our third resistance would be con connected here okay so these are the three terminals of our delta and we have just drawn a star using these three terminals so now what do i do i have three resistances ra i am naming them small so that we don't confuse rc okay and we also know the formula for how to go about converting from the delta to the star configuration so what do i do first thing that we do is that we find the sum of r's that is the first thing we do so what would be the sum of r's sum of the three resistances is of course 20 it is 5 plus 5 plus 10 which is 20 now what about this resistance r's let's first find out the value of rc rc we have to take the two adjacent resistance which is 5 into 10 okay so these are the two adjacent resistance we multiply them together divided by 20 what about so this is rc then we calculate the second resistance which is i am going uh, inverted by rb rb the two resistances on either side are 5 and 10 so again 5 into 10 divided by 20 what about the third one third one is of course ra RA, the two resistances on either side is one is this, one is this. So R2 and R3 are the two resistances. So this becomes 5 into 5 divided by 20. If I were to simplify this thing, this becomes 5 by 2. This comes out to be uh, 5 by, again this is 2, 5 by 2. And this, of course, we can simplify it and this will come out to be 5 4s are 20 this comes out to be 5 by 4 okay so those are the three resistances now in our circuit okay so and and just we just have to make sure that we ignore these branches completely so the black branches are completely gone and we are now left with 
this this circuit the red circuit okay so i am over drawing lines here so that it is very very clear okay so that is the circuit that we are left with okay nothing complicated very very simple okay now what we can do we can now add these two resistances together this r1 and ra can be added together because they are in series so at the top branch okay so i will write it as r top or rt what is the total resistance is 10 plus ra which is 5 by 4 what about the bottom branch there is a bottom branch also right here which is rc plus 5 that is that is the total resistance in the bottom branch so at the bottom branch i will write it as rb okay and this comes out to be 5 plus rc rc is 5 by 2 okay so if you simplify this this comes out to be 45 by 4 and this comes out to be 5 to the 10 15 by 2 now these two resistances uh, rt and rb they are in parallel we can cl clearly see that these two resistances are actually in parallel this r top this is the top branch and there is the bottom branch and rb okay these two resistances are in parallel so how do i add the parallel uh, resistances the, the what would be the net resistance the net resistance would be in this case 1 by r would be equal to 1 by rt plus 1 by rb that is what i need to do or this comes out to be 4 by 45 plus 15 by 2 okay so this is 15 by 2 i can write it as oh sorry uh, this is also i have to invert it also 2 by 15 okay this 2 by 15 i can write it as 6 by 45 i multiply both top and numerator and denominator by uh, 3 so this becomes net equal to 10 by 45 okay or this is 1 by r so what will be the value of r the net resistance this this entire thing i have converted into a single resistance now so there is a single resistance r here okay what is the value of this resistance it is nothing but 45 by 10 and what would be the net resistance across the two terminal these two terminals it is nothing but my net resistance which i am calling r net okay i am writing it here r net is nothing but it is equal to r plus rb and if you simplify this this is equal to 45 by 10 plus 5 by 2 if we simplify this further this comes out to be 7 ohm okay so that look at this so this entire equivalent circuit of this vd strong bridge we were able to find out without using the kirchhoff laws okay in this vt stone bridge simplification happened just by converting one delta to star and that is our preferred method we will always try to convert the delta networks to now let's look at another example of, of using the star uh, delta to star transformation in order to simplify uh, our circuits now the object here is actually to find the current through this 15 volt battery okay but we are not going to solve for this we'll just see how we can simplify this circuit using the delta to star transformation so if we were to use kirchhoff laws directly this circuit would become very complicated because there are at least three loops we can see here but if we identify that there is a delta right here and this can be converted into a star configuration then perhaps our jobs might become much easier so this these are the three resistances r1 r2 and r3 and i, I have identified a, a star Uh, i have identified a delta which i want to transform to a star so let's just uh, begin doing that but first of all let's just write this 2.4 as 12 by 5 because uh, uh, we like fractions there is there to uh, simplify uh, without calculators okay so first thing we do in order to do the transform is of course like always we come calculate the sum of r's sum of r's is 6 plus 6 plus 12 by 5 that is nothing but 72 by 5 that is the sum of r now what about r1 r1 is nothing but the two resistances on either side multiplied together which is 6 into 12 by 5 divided this entire thing would be divided by this sum of r which is equal to 72 by 5 and this is nothing but 1 r2 
is also would come out to be the same thing because 12.5 into 6 again this and this also comes out to be 1. What about R3? R3 would be 6 into 6 divided by 72 by 5 and this comes out to be 5 by 2. So now we have computed our three resistances R1, R2 and R3. Now let us see how the circuit looks like you in terms of these three resistances R1, R2 and R3. You will be amazed to realize that circuit will become quite a bunch simpler just by doing this small conversion. So this, this branch is gone, this branch is gone, this branch is actually gone. Instead from C to E we have R1 and R2. So there are two resistances here R1 and one more resistance R2 and here of course we have node C and here we have node E. From this middle node between R1 and R2, R3 goes to D. So I can simply draw this R3 and this goes to D. And from D, I have a 6 ohm resistance right here, which I can simply draw. And from this side, I have a 9 ohm resistance, which I can simply draw. And this goes to F and uh, sorry, this is a small F. And between E and F, I have a battery and this battery is actually 5 volt. Okay, It has not been written here, but this is a 5 volt battery and we are interested in finding the current through the 15 volt battery. So now the 6 ohm resistance and the R1 can actually be combined together because they are in, they are in series. So we can simply add them together. Okay, And the rest of the circuit also looks quite a bit simpler once we have done this transform. And then of course there is this 15 volt battery and now we can solve this particular circuit using either the mesh analysis method or the nodal voltage analysis method that we have studied. But in either case the main point is that after this transform the circuit becomes quite a bunch a lot simpler than the original circuit which looked so much complicated. Okay, So that is where the star delta transform comes along. The star delta transform would help you simplify your original problem to a simpler problem which can be solved either directly using the uh, series parallel formula in the as in the case of Wheatley Stone bridge that we saw or it can be it will make even if you had to apply the nodal analysis mesh analysis or the Kirchhoff laws it will make the equations much more uh, so much more simpler. So there are some cases where the star delta transform does not really help and we need to identify those cases as well. So here is a thing where your first uh, uh, thing might be that oh let me just apply this is a star right here. Okay, so let me just convert this star to a delta and, and see how things would go. See the, at this point there is no, no, there will be no use if the, if the star branches are connected to batteries that is if the circuit has more than uh, one battery and it, in this case we have several. Okay, but the main point being that if your star branches are connected to batteries then there will be no gain in applying the star delta transform. So here is a star. And now if we want to, if we convert this to delta, what would happen? One branch would actually come here between these two nodes. One branch would actually come here between these two nodes. So this will be our new RA, RB and one branch would actually come here between these two nodes RC. Okay, And because the, the way the batteries are connected, this would not give us any real benefit. Okay, The original branches, this will be gone. These branches are gone, okay. But the way the because the ways the, uh, the the way in which the batteries are connected, we cannot simplify this R A R B. We cannot connect them in series, uh, and so we cannot further simplify R A R A R B R C uh, any any further. We cannot do anything with those, okay. So with this, so in such problems, uh, don't don't do that. If the if the resistances are connected to batteries, don't use this transform. Use the transform when we don't have batteries connected to the resistance, as as was the case with uh, uh, this one. Our uh, Witty stone bridge or, or the second problem that we saw. Okay, so with this we we, uh, we complete all the all the shortcuts to the Kirchhoff uh, laws. There were three, and do solve problems using these shortcuts as much as possible, so that you can you become conversant with them, you develop speed on them, and hopefully you will be able to solve your problems much quicker than thirty seconds. Put your comments and suggestions in in the comment section uh, comment sections uh, below, and I'll be very happy to look at those. Okay, thank you.